road again. Seems like we spend more time on the road than we ever do at home, but then this is essentially our office. This is what we do. And this time we're going someplace south and to see something very cool. Maybe even do some cool stuff with it. So ever since we got our brand new Dynatrack Pro Rock 44 installed with 513 gears, I've had a number of people ask what my impressions are of that particular gear ratio. And since we have a whole lot of time to kill, maybe about eight hours worth, I thought I would share some of my thoughts with you now. So right off the bat, what I can tell you is that yes, the 513s will give you crazy power off the line, or at least what it felt like when we were bone stock, even pushing 37 inch tires. All right, you ready for this? And yes, your crawl ratio will feel better on the rocks. And what everyone wants to know, will you get eighth gear back? Absolutely, you can see it right now. If there is a downside to them, it's the fact that you will be running a slightly higher RPM at highway speeds. So as you can see here, I'm cruising at about 70 miles an hour. In fact, I can go ahead and set my cruise control at 70. If you look over at the tack, you can see that I'm doing about 2,400 RPMs right now. Now, back when we were running 410 gears with our 37s, that would have been more like 2,000. So we're 400 RPM more than we were before. And that will lead into your fuel economy. So even though you do get your eighth gear back, uh, we've actually seen a decrease of about maybe three miles per gallon. So here you can see we've been averaging about 14.1 miles per gallon. We've done about 145 miles. It's not horrible. Certainly our JK does worse than that. However, prior to the gear change, we were actually averaging more like 16, so maybe even a little bit more at times. So we're actually down at least two, maybe three miles per gallon ever since we went with 513s. So for those of you who are conscious about your fuel economy, if, if that's important to you, actually going with a slightly lower ratio might be something you want to consider. But if power is really what you're after, 513s will give it to you. So one thing worth noting is that when we were running 410 gears and 37 inch tires, you know, we'd always hover in and out of like sixth or seventh gear at highway speeds. And when you went to go pass a car on like a two lane highway or a truck, it would actually dive into fourth gear and give you a lot of power to make that pass. Now, interestingly enough, although we can get eighth gear back with the 513s, if you're doing like 70 miles an hour and you're trying to pass somebody, it will not go below fifth gear. That's even if you're trying to manually shift it. It will not allow you to get below fifth gear. My guess is that um, there's a, some kind of governor or a limiter that's trying to prevent you from redlining. Whatever the case is, you cannot get that extra power and make the pass as quickly as you might want to. So that is kind of an interesting thing that I'm not super happy with. I wish I could get just a little bit more power, but the 513s, at least in terms of passing on the highway, will not give that to you not at that speed or at least not at that speed um, that's a good point so if I'm doing maybe like 60 miles an hour and then I try to pass it'll go into fourth but if I'm doing 70 no way it will not drop below fifth so once we get a little bit further up ahead and I can actually start passing people again um, we'll show you some examples of that so as you can see here I'm doing 75 miles an hour I'm gonna pass now gear to go in is fifth. Even if I try to manually shift it, it's a shift not allowed. Kind of frustrating. Okay, so just for example purposes, I'm going to slow up to about 60 miles an hour. So I'm doing about 60 here and I'm going to try it again. There, see? Went down into fourth. 
lot of passing power there. So the bottom line, I'm actually really happy that I went with 513s. My purpose is having the power off the line, being able to rock crawl, and not really being as concerned about fuel economy as others might be. This is a great setup for my needs. Is it a great setup for everybody? Maybe not. If you're a guy who spends a lot of time on the highway and actually can appreciate having a couple, two to three more miles per gallon, um, I might actually recommend something like a 488 with 37s. A re gear is definitely helpful, but going as much as 513s might be a bit too much. And for those of you who want to save a few bucks, I personally think that the 410s that come on the Rubicon and 37s is a great setup. If I didn't re-gear, I don't know if I would care. But hey, that's just my opinion. I did say that we would be seeing something really cool tonight, and here we are. <coughs> I'm pretty sure they're home. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Time to go see it. So shiny. Yeah. Yeah, this looks really good. I was happy with it. It's yeah. really nice. Wow. Man, it's hard to believe that you actually have one. Oh, so, oh there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Top and a soft top. Oh, nice. Mel's gonna tell us what the plan is for this awesome Jeep. Hi, guys, welcome to my house. My name is Mel Wade. Uh, we're super stoked to get this uh, new Gladiator. So, we're gonna build it up Mad Rush this next two weeks, right before Moab. We'll set it up uh, uh, pretty big the way we usually like to have a cool vehicle, kind of go overland vehicle, obtainable vehicles, what we're looking for. So, we actually wanted to start off with uh, an X or a Sport. Uh, instead of opting for the Rubicon, which I knew I was already going to cut all that stuff out. So we're going to shake this down hopefully tomorrow uh, and Sunday, get some cool pictures out there and have a good time. But then we'll get it back to the shop on Monday, and Monday we already have Axel sitting there waiting for us. Uh, Dana Spicer Axel is going to go underneath there. Short arm kit on this one, Overland kit, 40-inch uh, tires. Be a really cool build. We got Rubicon fenders coming for uh, for the Gladiator. So we'll be able to keep it relatively low, uh, but still a cool overall look. We got roof tents and lights and everything else. So <laughs> super exciting, still, still very utilitarian if you want to, but it'll be able to kick butt on that stuff. So we're dabbling around with names right now. Uh, one's Taco Killer. Uh, so I think it's been sticking pretty good. I do like tacos, so it's awesome. But uh, you know, the Tacoma. So that's what we're looking to kick butt is on the Tacoma. And we're gonna build a nice overland vehicle for that. So we've been driving all day. It's one o'clock in the morning, but it was totally worth it. Not only did we get to see our good friends Mel and Lisa from Off-Road Evolution or Evil Manufacturing, we got to see their awesome new JT or Gladiator. The best part is tomorrow, we're gonna be hitting some dirt with it. <laughs> <laughs> 